is the magic math automation that lets you play the Continuum Lab Instrument Kit Blues. Welcome to the Continuum Lab. Yes, it's true, all of the 3D files for my MIDI instrument prototypes are now available for download under an open license. You can already find the files over on umagine.com. I'll put a link in the description. This is not a full tutorial on how to make each instrument. Those videos are currently in production. Instead, in this video, I'll focus only on the 3D printed pieces, what they're for, how they work, how they fit into each instrument and so on. Keep in mind that I've also developed techniques for making all of these instruments without using a 3D printer at all. And that will be covered in the individual instrument tutorials. I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail because there will almost certainly be changes to some of these models, as indeed some improvements have already happened since I first introduced the instruments. I just really wanted to give everyone access to the files before I actually launch the kit. So let's get into it. My concept for wind instrument keys is based on years of development, first on the open horn MIDI system and now on the click itself. I use capacitive sensors for this, which means that each key basically consists of a conductive surface and a dielectric layer which covers it. Now in its simplest form, this can be handmade with minimal tools and materials. But if you have a 3D printer, then of course you can make something much cooler. These keys are made up of two printed pieces each. The small disc is covered in metallic tape and then some kind of insulation. And that fits inside the ring-shaped piece like this. That's how I made the keys that you see on the Clixophone. I made these keys in three different sizes and there's also a slanted version to make edge keys like these. For the bamboo Clixophone or other cylindrical instruments, there's even a version with a curved base. And of course, the different keys can be combined any way you want to fit your use case. Instead of trying to design some complex geometry or mechanism for fixing the keys onto an instrument, as you can see I've kept them as simple and universal as possible, so I can simply glue them into place wherever I want them. The box ends are structural pieces which I combine with a corrugated material like polypropylene to make box shapes for my instruments. Their main feature is the geometry itself, which lets you fold the corrugated sheet around them to give a super sturdy and nice looking structure with a lid that opens like this. The box ends are always used in pairs, making up the opposite ends of a box, as the name implies. I use them to put together the clixophone and the different click keyboards. One end normally has a cutout for the micro USB plug as well as for the calibration button. This is what that looks like. And the other end has several different options. You might want a hole for a breath tube, which is what was originally on my Melodica. Another has a cutout for a mouthpiece, like this one, and even has a rudimentary locking function, which works by simply twisting the mouthpiece like this. There are three different sizes of each piece, 68, 88 and 108 millimeters wide. But if that doesn't work for you, then editing the file to make a wider or narrower version should be pretty trivial. The string sensors for the click string instruments are also capacitive sensors, just like the wind instrument keys that I showed you before. The main difference is simply the way that the click software interprets the reading from the sensor. Plus, of course, the fact that these are specifically shaped to emulate strings. The design is really just a simple base to put the sensor material onto, perfectly illustrated by the fact that I'm also able to make the same kind of sensor using a common match as a base, as I've demonstrated in the past. On the original bass and ukulele instruments, the fretboard sections were printed in groups of four. This makes sense because the click lets you make those instruments with four or eight sections in total. But it turned out to be really hard to assemble because you have to keep track of all the 16 individual cables and the tape that covers each fret while trying to glue everything into place. Not really a great solution. 
So on the latest models, I separated each fretboard section so that there are only four cables to manage at a time. I also left one side of each section open so that I can use heat shrink tube as a dielectric material, inserting it from the end instead of the tape which has to be individually rolled on. Still not super easy to put together, but it makes for a stronger and prettier finish. The only real difference between the ukulele and bass guitar versions is size. I literally just scaled up one to get the other, with a few minor adjustments thrown in as well to make everything fit together. The membrane is an original instrument concept which uses balloons for membranes to make a kind of drum type thing. The instrument doesn't have to be used for percussion though. It can output either velocity or continuous volume control and so it can be used for many different things. I made three different sizes of the individual unit, which can be combined any way you like. And there's also both a countersunk as well as a raised version of each. Keep in mind that this uses the CNY70 sensor module, which is an optical sensor. So the raised version should be printed in black or other fully opaque materials only to avoid problems with outside light interfering with the sensor. The countersunk version doesn't have this problem. There are three printed pieces to each unit, the membrane platform and the sensor support, which both fit inside the third piece, the main outer cylinder. Assembly is pretty simple. The sensor holder fits one of the CNY70 sensor modules and can be placed at three different heights. The membrane platform holds the balloon with the aid of a rubber band. The click code lets you make a set of these with one, four, six or eight units out of the box. This is the only one of the click instruments which isn't meant to directly emulate an acoustic instrument, but it's pretty interesting all the same. The membranes make for a very tactile interface and I found it to be quite popular with the kids especially. Okay, next I want to show you the 3D printed mouthpieces and breath sensors, but first a short musical break. Let you play the Continuum Lab Instrument Kit Blues. The Continuum Lab instrument kit comes with two breath sensors included, one of which can also be used as a mouthpiece. First let's have a look at the bottle top breath sensor. This is printed in two pieces, which are then clamped together around a CNY70 sensor module and a cut off plastic water bottle top, which has been prepared with suitable breath holes and a balloon membrane. To use it as a mouthpiece, just blow directly into the larger of the holes, or you can insert silicone tubes if you want to use a separate mouthpiece. There are several versions of this. One has a bend in it for better ergonomics in some use cases. Others include locking packs on the base, which allow the mouthpiece to lock in place when you use it together with one of the box ends that I showed you before. The one included in the kit is this one, which has no packs and no bend. The circular base can be embedded in an instrument or you can use it as a standalone breath controller. The other breath sensor that you get with the kit is this one here. It uses the same CNY70 sensor module, but a different membrane setup with a water balloon instead of the full size balloon in the other one. It works great, but it is slightly less sensitive and responsive than the bottle top one. This one needs a silicone tube and can't work very well as a standalone mouthpiece. The best thing about it is really how compact it is and the fact that you can fit it into basically any one of the click instruments. So, to complement that breath sensor, in case you're not satisfied with blowing directly into the silicone tube, there's also a dedicated mouthpiece, which doesn't include a breath sensor, but does have some other cool features. I call it the pitch bend mouthpiece, because it fits two capacitive lip sensors, which are used to generate pitch bend output. This design is also printed in two pieces, not because it has to clamp together over something, but rather because of details of the geometry and the result that I want for the layer direction of the print itself. In fact, I glue these pieces together permanently before I use them. The self-flexing melodica keys were quite a surprise to me when I first made them and they actually worked. 
if all of the click instruments are to be considered prototypes, then these ones are downright experimental. I did make a robot to test one key and it ran for 2 million cycles, at which point it still worked but was a bit deformed. But of course that result would be different if I were to print it in a different material or even perhaps if I vary factors like print infill and such. Still, these keys can be made to work and my thinking is, if one breaks then I can easily print another. I have updated the design a bit in the basic geometry, trying to reduce the need for support material when printing and also to improve the stability of the electrical contact of the key itself. If you want to try to print these, then I really recommend that you make one or two first and test them out before trying to make a full 32 key melodica. I'll finish on the ocarina, which was the very first instrument that I made in the click series and which hasn't changed at all since then. This is actually one of the more complex click models, although it looks simple on the outside. On the inside of this half shell design, it has a bunch of cutouts for components and cables, as well as a breath sensor. So if you want to print this, then support material is definitely needed. The prints for this instrument consist of both halves of the body, of course, as well as the four small discs that make up the keys. The assembly is a little bit finicky, both because of the silicone tube, which has sort of a weird path, and because of all the cables, which tend to sneak out and get stuck between the halves of the instrument as you try to put it together. The breath sensor inside is the one that I showed you earlier, which comes included with the kit. Okay, I think that covers just about everything. As I mentioned, you can download these models from the link in the description if you want to have a look for yourself. And if you like MIDI controllers and 3D printing, then I really recommend that you subscribe right here on the channel. The next video will most likely be the actual launch of the Continuum Lab instrument kit, which will also mark the official opening of the webshop over at continuumlab.com. So if you're a new viewer, then congratulations! You tuned in at the most interesting time possible. And if, on the other hand, you've been following along for a while, then thank you. Thank you, thank you for sticking around through all of my false starts and doubts and delays. I promise you, we're almost there. The click is just around the corner. I'll leave you for now with the third and final take of my little clicksophone blues solo. If you have strong feelings about which of these takes is the better one, then feel free to share that in the comments. I've already got my own personal favorite picked out, but if you're very convincing, then maybe you will change my mind. The full song will be in the next video. Hope you enjoy, take care until next time, and I'll see you in the continuum. It's the magic math automation that lets you play the continuum lab instrument kit blues.